Up next on Connections, it's baseball season in Chicago. We'll show you the easiest way to get to the ballpark. You'll see how CTA is using federal stimulus funds for the Blue Line subway slow zone removal. Gene's journey is to a Chicago gem that's always in bloom. And you'll find out what to do if your Chicago card is expiring soon. The CTA, working hard to improve, committed to quality, and its riders. Welcome to Connections. The CTA, delivering quality, affordable transit that links people, jobs, and communities. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. Don't you just love baseball season in Chicago? And you know the CTA will take you out to the ball game. Here in Chicago, we have a lot of baseball fans. As you are aware, we have two great baseball teams with the Chicago Cubs and the White Sox. And fortunately, the Red Line services both Wrigley and U.S. Sailor Field. So you know, the little rivalry there is really great. You got one side of the city really in a rival with the other side of the city, but they all come together and they love baseball. This is a baseball town, and this is the best time of the year. Is there anything better than baseball in Chicago? Maybe not having to park your car at the game. It's better to catch the CTA because you don't have to worry about parking issues and you, when you buy your transit card you can put your, your going fare on there and your return fare on there and then you have less waiting. You can pop right through the turnstiles, hit your card, get on the train, get right to your destination. And during those games we do run a little bit of extra service. There are several ways to find out the best way for you to take CTA to U.S. Cellular and Wrigley Field. And there are several rail lines and bus routes to choose from. The easiest way they can find out would be they can check our website at transitchicago.com. The very best way is to catch the red line 235th. You walk half a block to Sailor Field, you're right there. There's another option, you can catch the green line to 35th and State. You have to walk over two and a half blocks and you're right there at the field. Or you can catch the number 24 Wentworth and the 29 State Street buses who are in close proximity also you can walk right over to the field and the red line would drop you right off here at Addison. Also, we have a Clark Street bus that you can board downtown and it'll get you here as well. Addison and Clark is the location for Wrigley Field. We usually provide bus service two hours before the game, and during the week on weeknights, we provide service uh, one hour after the game is over. But on weekends, we provide bus service up to two hours after the game, as well as the two hours before the game. We have the 22 Clark that goes north and south from this location. We have a regular service, the 152 Addison bus, in which we add extra service out here as well during the baseball game. And we have uh, the 154 Wrigley route in which it operates just for the baseball game. Be sure to check and see which route works best for you. CTA is the best way to go. It's the best, it's the most convenient, it's inexpensive, and the best equipment, best operators, and we will get you, get you there. CTA is a great way to get around the city, and I suggest that everyone should use the CTA to get to their destinations. With the parking rates going up, with the hassle of trying to find parking, I think CTA is everyone's best option as far as getting around the city. You'll hit a home run every time you take the CTA to a game. For those of you who ride the Red Line, Brown Line, or Purple Express, you've probably noticed some big improvements. CTA Rail is becoming more convenient than ever before. Now that we're back to a full level of service, we can run more trains, uh, so we have more service on the Brown Line and Purple Line in particular, and we can operate service more quickly on all three of the lines. So the Red Line is faster, Brown is faster, and Purple Line is faster. When CTA resumed service on all four tracks in the area of Belmont to Fullerton, customers noticed. The three-track project was a reconfiguration of the north side main line. Basically, it's part of the Brown Line Rehabilitation Project, and what we were looking to do was enhance service in the area by rebuilding some of the, the stations in the area. So Fullerton and Belmont were really the major stations that needed to be rebuilt, and in order to get through that area, 
we needed to go from four tracks of operation down to three tracks of operation at those two stations. Now that service is restored, what are people saying? The difference that I've seen is that the trains definitely move a lot faster and there's more trains running, so you have a better chance of catching a train when you come to the station. And uh, if you don't, like, like me, I'm in a rush in the morning, I don't have time to go on the computer and like look up when the train's going to get to the station. I used it every day anyway, so now it's just quicker and more efficient. Yes, uh, me too, yeah. Now that Sundays aren't very delayed, I'll, I'll use event Sundays and before I would avoid it. Ridership has responded to the fact that we have completed the project and that the train service is now very reliable, dependable, uh, you can get downtown very quickly, and it's a much faster, smoother trip. Oh yes, definitely. When I am here, they do move a lot quicker, especially when coming back in into the loop. It's a lot faster and the trains are coming by a lot quick, more faster. Not only have I noticed that the trains are running faster, but just the uh, area to stand and wait for the, the trains, it's such a huge difference. I think that they're running faster. I think they've usually had a good schedule, and with the service when it was interrupted for the construction, I mean, that was a burden on a lot of us. I think they've done a wonderful job. Many customers had switched to bus routes during the three-track project. When we first started this project, we had a campaign to really get people to switch from rail over to the bus system, and that worked very effectively. But what we found is people have responded to it so favorably and, and found it to be such a good experience that they're staying with it, and ridership is still growing on the North, North Lakeshore bus routes. Some of those people went to the bus system and are starting to come back over to the rail system, and we want to encourage them to continue coming back because at this point, we have the capacity on those trains so that they can actually get on board the first train coming by. It's easy to see why customers are so happy with the improvements. CTA is committed to providing great service to everyone in the city. Still to come, how to talk like a seasoned transit veteran. So when and why did you start riding the CTA? Started riding the CTA about five years ago when I moved here and basically use it to get downtown because parking is too expensive down there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I take it every day for the past, I don't know, at least eight years. Hmm, maybe back in 1974. Wow. <laughs> I started running uh, the CTA about uh, five years ago. Uh, I didn't have a car and I needed to get into the city and up to the north side. I took it for the first time today. I had something downtown. I needed to get there and there was no way I was driving. What line do you usually take? Um, red or brown. I used to take the green line. Now I take uh, predominantly the brown line. What line? Oh God, it was one of those old trains back in the day. I don't know what line that was. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because oh, the colors are easier right. to remember. Exactly. Faster service is here on several CTA bus routes. More express service has been added to three routes. Number X49 Western Express, number X55 Garfield Express, and number X80 Irving Park Express. These experimental service enhancements are part of an effort to improve the overall efficiency of the routes. The express service enhancements will change the ratio of express to local service along the three test corridors. More express service will be running along these routes. CTA research has shown that bus service is most effective when there is a higher ratio of express to local service along corridors that serve as major thoroughfares. A minimum 15-minute frequency will be retained on the local service. Check TransitChicago.com or CTABusTracker.com for more information about bus routes running near you. Combining technology and teamwork while delivering dependable, affordable transit. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. In April, many Chicago Card Plus and Chicago Cards will expire. We'll show you how you can check and see if your card is expiring and what you need to do about it. Our Chicago Card, Chicago Card Plus cards are set to expire four years after the card is issued. We have approximately 4,600 Chicago cards that are going to begin expiring in April of 2009. We have approximately 50,000 Chicago Card Plus cards that begin expiring in July of 2009. 
morning. Good morning. Not sure about the expiration date on your card? There's three ways that they can find out. For the Chicago cards, they could find out either online, they could also check at the rail station near the CTA kiosk, or they can call the 188-YOUR-CTA number. For the Chicago Card Plus cards, every time a customer logs onto their account, their expiration date is shown. They can also uh, check the card expiration date at the CTA rail stations, or they can call the 188-YOUR-CTA. 45 days prior to the Chicago cards are going to expire, they will receive an email notice notifying them that their card is expiring. The Chicago card customers are notified via email if we have an email address on their account. If not, we will notify them via U.S. mail at least 30 to 45 days prior to their card expiring. The easiest way to request a new card to replace a card that will expire is to go online. For the Chicago Car customers, we recommend that they go to the CTA's website at www.transchicago.com. Once you're on that website, there are, at the top, there's links, and there's a pull-down menu, and it'll take you either to the Chicago Car homepage or the Chicago Car Plus homepage. Once they get to that website page, what they're going to then do, there will be instructions for them to let them know, you know, what, what's the next step. There is a link on the Chicago Car and the Chicago Car Plus um, page that'll ask, how do I replace my expiring card? Okay, and then there will be directions. Um, uh, for the Chicago Car customers, um, you'll also have the opportunity of upgrading your card. If you don't have access to the internet, CTA makes it easy for you to get your new card. They can either come to 567 West Lake Street, CTA Sales Center on the second floor, or they can call 188-YOUR-CTA. Remember to go to transitchicago.com to update all your information. Ever heard a CTA service term that left you wondering? With our new feature transit terms, we'll explain some common CTA lingo. A single track is an operation where trains in both directions share the same track. Most of our system is built with two tracks, one used by inbound and the other used by outbound trains. And in certain cases of maintenance, we have to close a track and trains in both directions then share the remaining track. A single track affects customers mostly by uh, slightly prolonging travel time. And that's because when you have trains sharing one track in both directions, they can only go through one at a time in sequence. For most of our maintenance activities, we like to uh, perform the task at hand under service so that it has little or no impact to customers. But there are certain things that require a track to be closed, and in those cases, we shift all the service to the remaining track. We know that single tracks have the potential of impacting customers, so we tend to schedule them at time periods when they affect the fewest people. And that's primarily overnight and sometimes on weekends. Now you can impress all your friends and neighbors with your inside knowledge of the CTA. Up next, we're visiting a Chicago gym where spring is in full swing. On an average weekday, the CTA provides 1.7 million rides, getting people where they need to go around Chicago and the 40 surrounding suburbs. If you want to hop aboard, here's how to get all the information you need. Online, go to www.transitchicago.com. There you can access system maps, bus and train schedules, and service updates. You can even use the Google Trip Planner. Enter where you want to start, where you want to go, and what time you plan to travel. For regional trips, you can use the RTA Trip Planner. Another option, make the connection by phone. Call 836-7000 from any local area code.
the word connection, a link or a spark that brings people together. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. Well, according to the calendar, it is officially springtime in Chicago. But you know what that means. Some days it feels like spring and some days it doesn't. But we're going to celebrate the season no matter what. On today's Jean's Journey, we're going to take a quick trip to the west side and check out the Spring Flower Show at the Garfield Park Conservatory. Come on. I get to the Garfield Park Conservatory from here? Well, you can go up the escalator, take the bridge on the platform, uh -huh. over to the other side, get the train that says Harlem Lake. Got it. And the green the line. Yes, it's the green line okay. train. All right, what exit do I get off at? At Conservatory. Bingo. It'll say Conservatory. That's really easy. Thank you, okay. ma'am. Have a good day. I will. being a brown line train. Oops. Riding the L is a journey in itself. It's a great way to see the city. This is Conservatory Central Park Drive. The Conservatory Central Park Drive station opened back in 2001. The station houses and portions of the canopies are historically preserved components from the former Holman station, which was originally built two blocks away back in the 1890s. While the exterior of the Queen Anne style station was restored, the interior was recreated, reflecting the original design, but with 21st century amenities. We've got here in less than 15 minutes. Woohoo! Flower time! And this is the Garfield Park Conservatory. Look at this, palm trees in the middle of Chicago no matter what the weather is outside. I knew you'd like it. But I smell spring flowers this way. The Garfield Park Conservatory is a great destination for anybody who wants a peaceful way to spend the day. The flowers, plants, and trees are here year-round, and the best part of it all, it's free! Mm. I wish we had smell-o-vision. And to think, all this green is right next door to the green line. You can't possibly forget that. I hope you take this journey for yourself. And next month, we'll have another Jean's Journey to take you around the city using the CTA. <music> Stimulus funds are coming our way, and the CTA has big plans for what to do with the money. Eliminating slow zones has been a priority for CTA for the last few years. Work has been completed in many areas and now it's time to focus on more of the Blue Line subway. This project is actually being paid for using economic stimulus funds. This is CTA's first economic stimulus project and we're estimating that it will create 400 jobs locally. Why the concern about slow zones? Slow zone is a section of track that is uh, beyond its service life and in need of repair. 
Um, and in order to maintain safe travel, we'll turn the speeds down from the normal civil speed, let's say 55 miles or 60 miles an hour, to 35, 25, or 15, depending on the condition or the placement of the track in relationship to a curve or some other feature. Slow zones create longer travel times for customers, so as we eliminate slow zones, trains move more quickly through areas and we can move more trains during the same period of time, so service improves. In 2007 and 2008, we focused on eliminating slow zones in the Dearborn Street subway, so we only worked on those portions of the track that had existing slow zones. This project is different because it will completely renew all of the track in the Dearborn subway that hasn't previously been worked on. So we'll prevent any future slow zones as well as eliminating existing ones. The portion of the Dearborn Street subway up to LaSalle was put into service in 1951, 58 years ago. The goal of this project is to replace old wooden ties with concrete ones as well as new fasteners. Work will begin in spring 2009. The work is going to take place on weekends to avoid impacting the rush hour commute. So the line cuts will begin on Friday evening and continue through very early Monday morning. We'll have signs in the stations and on the trains. Um, we'll also have extra customer assistance on duty to direct customers to the bus shuttles. And we'll also have alerts on our website. Look for work to begin in the Blue Line subway this spring. Just ahead on Connections, a brand new station with a brand new look. Missed an episode of Connections? Want to find an address or a link featured? Then go to the Connections website. There are several ways to find us. Go to www.transitchicago.com and click on Connections. Or visit the Connections website at podcastchicago.tv and click the Connections link to find the most recent episodes. You can watch episodes online for instant viewing. Or you can subscribe with your favorite podcasting tool and automatically download new shows each month. Like all video podcasts, Connections can be viewed directly on your computer or laptop or can be viewed on a portable media player such as the video iPod. Connect online with Connections at podcastchicago.tv. Getting from here to there quickly, easily, and without breaking the bank. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. Our tour of the Brown Line continues. This time we're visiting the newly reopened Paulina Station. Brown Line's on time and on budget, and we're going to get it completed by the end of 2009. The last few years have brought many changes to the Brown Line. One by one, stations are being rebuilt. The Brown Line Capacity Expansion Project is, is really just that, a, a capacity expansion project. Uh, the two main goals of the project are to make all the stations ADA accessible, as well as extending all the platforms at all the stations from six cars to eight cars, so we can run the same number of trains, but provide an extra two cars, and thus getting more capacity. This month, we're bringing you to the new Paulina station, which was moved across the street from its previous location. A brand new station with a brand new look. Like the other Brown Line stations, many of the amenities here at Polina are similar to those, and they include the eight-car platforms, elevators to make the station ADA accessible, wider stairways, new lighting, new signage, bike racks, things like that. Everything is basically brand new as we move forward with the, with the station. A unique part of each Brown Line station is the artwork that is distinctive to its neighborhood. All the Brown Line stations have some kind of artwork uh, at them as we open them up. At Polina, there are two pieces of artwork actually. One is a mosaic that was built in, a, in accordance with the back wall uh, of the main stairway. And the second piece is a, is a art sculpture that hangs in the front of the station house as you enter. Chicago-based artist Barbara Cooper created the suspended brass and stainless steel sculpture for the atrium and a cut glass tile mosaic mural in the mezzanine leading up to the inbound and outbound train platforms. Entitled Transitions, the artwork depicts the fluid, high-energy neighborhoods of the city. With the Polina station, uh, it completes 15 uh, of the 18 stations that we're renovating. 
Uh, it leaves us with three stations, Wellington, Belmont, and Fullerton, uh, to complete. Uh, all three of them will be complete by the end of 2009. Customers are thrilled with the progress on the Brown Line. You know how it is. You walk down into the subway and you lose your cell signal. Well, now with one more carrier added, the CTA is helping to keep you connected even underground. In 2003, we started our own infrastructure investment in the subway system and it concluded that in 2005. Um, we now have the telecommunications infrastructure that not only provides our own communications for our employees, but helps the fire department, the police department, and other first responders, as well as the opportunity for telephone customers. Communication in the subway is critical for emergency personnel. The improved telecommunication system also laid the groundwork for CTA to generate additional revenue by leasing its wireless infrastructure. This allows the use of wireless devices such as cell phones, text messaging, and wireless email devices throughout the 11.4 mile subway system. The infrastructure allows people to use their cellular phones anywhere in the, in the red or blue subway systems on the train, on the platform, on the mezzanine, or at the emergency exits. Customers can take advantage of the telecommunications infrastructure with three wireless carriers, U.S. Cellular, Verizon, and most recently, Cricket. With wireless devices, customers never have to worry about losing touch. To let people know that you're going to be late, or like if something should happen, that you need to contact somebody because I don't have anything else other than a cell phone. I think that's great because when I sometimes I have free time and I'm waiting for my friends and I just call them, set, like kind of um, kill them time, so it's better. Customers today are engaged in their wireless activity every place they go. They want to be able to get cell phone calls, they want to be able to do text messaging, and they want to read their emails on their wireless email devices, and their PDAs. This offers our customers the opportunity then to stay in touch while they're uh, on the train, taking a few minutes on their way to work or their way home from work to uh, take care of some business, as well as give them a sense of security and safety so that they can always reach someone. Cricket is new to Chicagoland and understands how important wireless communication is to city residents. A partnership with CTA is a clear win-win for all involved. We do expect them and encourage them to follow some simple etiquette. You don't talk too loud. You don't have a conversation in your neighbor's ear, and you don't talk about things on the phone that you don't want other people to hear. Clearly, this is still a public space, and you should behave as though you're having a live conversation. So now you'll always be a phone call or text away from family and friends. We'll be right back. On an average weekday, the CTA provides 1.7 million rides, getting people where they need to go around Chicago and the 40 surrounding suburbs. If you want to hop aboard, here's how to get all the information you need. Online, go to www.transitchicago.com. There you can access system maps, bus and train schedules, and service updates. You can even use the Google Trip Planner. Enter where you want to start, where you want to go, and what time you plan to travel. For regional trips, you can use the RTA Trip Planner. Another option, make the connection by phone. Call 836-7000 from any local area code. <music> Traveling in and around Chicago on the CTA saves you time and money. I'm Jean Sparrow. Welcome to Connections. We're always looking for story ideas. Do you have a travel tip you'd like to share or a CTA story you'd like to tell? Give us a call at the Connections Hotline, 312-681-2812. Helping you make your connections, I'm Jean Sparrow. Thank you for watching.